entrepreneur, four-time world champion, UFC Hall of Famer, your WWF star. Now you're making your debut here at Balor Bare Knuckle, September 21st at Four Bears Casino. This is awesome. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited, man. I know uh, for a long time, back in the day when I started Bare Knuckle and they took it away, I always wanted to bring it back. So now I have an opportunity as a promoter. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. You're the owner of Valor Bare Knuckle. You've got your CEO, Des Woodruff, who you've been working with for a long time with Bout Management LLC. How'd the idea of this Valor Bare Knuckle thing come together and why is right now the right time for you guys to, to launch this thing? Well, I just think that... Um, like I said, I fell in love with it years back when I started the the, the bare knuckle part of it. And then, of yeah. course, this guy, Hank Abbott, came on, started knocking people out with gloves on. And they thought it would be a great idea to put gloves on people to protect the fighter. And the reality of it is they wanted to tech, protect the guys that were winning so they could come back and fight the fight in the same night. So there was a lot of politics in that. Again, for me, it was about what I fell in love with, that 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 realism, bare knuckle, you know, the mono -e mono the pureness of that. There was no gloves there was no equipment to make you better than man against man and i always said man i had the opportunity to do it to bring it back i would and so we had been watching the social media sites and and these people fighting on the street and they would get thousands of hit millions of hits then yeah. we saw a knuckle launch uh, a couple ones in england one here a couple here and we saw that they were actually out doing the mma with the, the viewers and stuff. So I said, wow, what an opportunity for us to be able to jump in now since we're seeing all the rise of the uh, of the popularity of uh, Bare Knuckle that we can actually launch it now and bring it to another level. So we came up with the name Valor because I thought like that's courage and honor. We want to make guys fight in there that they're respectful and that they're tough. And right. um, so we wanted a name to go along with how we wanted our company to be. And so that's kind of how we really came, really started out uh, and moving forward was because of what we were seeing with uh, these, these street fights that were happening and then with these other organizations launching, we sat back and watched these other organizations uh, make mistakes. We saw what the, the, that was what was working what wasn't working. And so we had an opportunity to really kind of sit back and really see what the right direction was because these other ones were already making those mistakes. We felt we could save a lot of money uh, letting all them make all the mistakes and then we could jump into it and actually do what we see works, what's working uh, for everyone. So that's kind of what we did. And that's how we actually got started. Awesome. And you guys are already planning a second show before the end of the year, right? Yeah, we're not in this for the short. We got a like we got a strong investment team. We've got a strong team around us uh, when it comes to our our organization, Valor itself. We yeah. have a good core of people. We have over eighty years of experience with our just our team uh, combined. Wow. That's a lot of connections, man. That's how yeah. we end up getting pay per view, our our uh, Direct TV, our Dish Network, all the major cable companies, and Fight TV, which is our digital. That's so how we yeah. were able to make all these connections was because of the amount of people on our team that has all those connections. We were able to plug into a lot of areas, just like with the media coverage that we're getting now. We're like, we're literally haven't even had a fight yet. We're already over the top of everyone. And it's right. because of the relationships that we have all built over the years on our team. Now, it's a, I believe there's eight fights on the night, including a four-man heavyweight tournament. Now, what, with that tournament, two fighters will fight twice in the night. You have fought in tournaments before. What's the mentality like as a fighter going back to the ring or the cage for the second time in a night? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a switch, right? I mean, yeah. you switch on and you're out there fighting. And then when you're done fighting, you do your interview, you go back to the room and you take care of whatever you have to take care of, making sure that you go in and fight again. But it's really a switch. There's a switch on and there's a switch off. And uh, when you're done fighting, you switch it off because now you got to regroup. And then when you step back into that ring, no matter what hurts, no matter you sprained this or you did this, or you got a cut here. When you turn that switch on, none of that matters. You just, right. you're, you're go. And yeah. uh, it's a mentality. And some, some people have a hard time fighting tournaments because that mentality of being able to turn it on and off just isn't there. So um, I think the guys that we have in our tournament, they have that switch. They switch it on, they switch it off. Yeah, you guys did something really cool. You guys have fans actually pick this first round of the tournament, right? Is there a fight that you're most excited to see happen? Well, I think the tournament itself, um, you know, Mark Godbeer versus Jack May, Mighty Mo versus Romero Sokaju. Yeah. And you're right, fans got to pick the first round. I'll say thank you to the fans for coming out. We had a great turnout. They got to pick that first round. And it's funny because a lot of us on the team wanted a certain first round matchups, right? And so we all kind of had our <laughs> ideas of 
he wanted. And it's funny too, because like the fans picked almost the same lineup that we would have picked. So it's wow. awesome to see the fans are that connected, what they would like to see as opposed to what we would like to see. It's the same thing. So, but Ishii Smith is a sneaker, right? When you think about uh, him being a uh, ex pro boxer and also a former world champion of boxer, and you got Esteban Payne, who's got a resume in the UFC or in the MMA world, Bare Knuckle is is a different beast. You think about boxing, they say, well, which one of these guys in MMA or boxing would transition better? And I guarantee you that 90% of the people would say MMA. And I I, I beg I beg to differ. The sure. easiest one to transition is, is the one that has the experience. Now you look at the two of them, people would think boxing would probably translate a lot easier into bare knuckle because everything is the same, right? I mean, it's footwork, it's still punching, they're just taking the gloves off. But here's the big difference, right? Boxers are used to doing a pick right? right? They're used to slapping things around. They're used to doing this, they're used to slipping. They're used to taking shots because, they, you know, guys are just touching them, trying to feel them before they hit them. Can't do that at bare knuckle. You can't touch them because if they touch you, they're going to cut you. So right. you can't let them touch you. You can't pick a boo. So the, the false sense of security with a boxer is to be able to slap them away or to, to block them with their hands, and they ain't going to be able to do that in bare knuckle. So right. I think the boxers are the ones that have to be more concerned about being able to transition into bare knuckle because of the way they're used to being able to defend punches, not because of the way they punch, but because of the way they defend the punches. So, But it'll be interesting. We've seen, uh, you know, Mal Najee step in there and, 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 you know, he had a tough fight. So yeah. I'm excited because just it's like back in the early days with the UFC where you had style against style. Yeah. This is the same thing where you've got guys coming from MMA, guys coming from boxing, you got kickboxing, you got whatever, and coming into bare knuckle and you're going, hey, everybody's 0-0 unless you've had a, a bare knuckle fight before. So you're all trying to transition your style into this style. So to me, it's really similar. Right, man, so cool. And, and there's all these other promotions you kind of spoke about earlier. You guys watched to see what they did wrong, what they did right. They all do something a little bit different. Uh, what does Valor Bare Knuckle bring into the table that's going to be different or make you guys stand out from these other promotions? Well, I, I think that the way you'll be able to view the fight. Um, we have a whole different uh, system there that yeah. we believe that the, the fans will be able to view it from a much better perspective. And I also believe that uh, the way that we're, we're allowing the fighters to go in and fight, they can't have tape on your hands. You have on the wrist. So they used to be able to tape their thumbs and stuff like that, but that gives them a chance to be able to poke people in the eye with their thumb because they get tape to support their thumbs. And so I want it to be, if, if it's bare knuckle, it's bare knuckle. You don't need tape on your hands. If you can't fight without tape, you don't belong in bare knuckle. Sure. It's a certain individual, a certain character, and a certain toughness that goes into bare knuckle. And you shouldn't be able to cheat and put tape on your hands and call yourself a bare knuckle fighter. Yeah, agreed. Well, hey, I also wanted to bring up, you recently got announced as wrestling or being called to wrestle at Impact Wrestling at their event in Las Vegas against Moose. This is huge news for wrestling fans. What's the game plan for that matchup, man? That's really exciting. Well, first of all, I was just playing around with Brian Cage, you know, oh. champion, <laughs> champion. You know, I was ribbing him. I had the belt before. and uh, You know how he talks about being the machine. I said, well, I'm going to break the machine. And uh, so we were kind of punk punching at each other a little bit through the media. And this guy chimes in. I don't know who he is. He says he's a five-star <laughs> athlete or whatever he is. I looked into him, man, and I was like, dude, you shouldn't say that because when people look up the background – they're going to find out you were a five-star bust. So it's right. not really – you don't want to lay on something that you didn't succeed at, right? So yeah. – but when he steps in front of me, I hope he has a little bit different attitude because when I'm standing in front of him, I'm not playing. You know, right. he, he has something to say. He's going to have to answer what he says. Yeah, man, I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. And that's just in a couple of weeks. You know, and one transition a little bit more to a personal side of things, but – you had this crazy childhood. You you were transitioned, you know, from placement homes to drug addictions. You got in a lot of fights. You even got stabbed. And then at a younger age, you came to know Christ, gave your life to Christ. There. I'm a believer as well. But how did your life change once you did give your life to Christ? There? Well, I, I don't know if it really changed much other than I just felt like um, I had a responsibility, you know, that there was always this, you know, almost like uh, you, when you get saved like that, you almost have the, uh, the responsibility 
to be a better role model or a better person. Uh, because you know that if you do that, then your life will be better. But if you constantly keep doing things wrong, you're only going to hurt yourself and other people. So there is a responsibility that kind of falls on you when you do that. It's not one that you don't want. It is one you want, but right. it's not like, you, especially when you live that way, like I did, um, knowing that I could fail and still get back up and still be a Christian. I, I didn't, didn't exclude me from being a Christian when I failed. It just meant I had to get up and ask for forgiveness and move back on. And to me, that was a big deal. It was a great thing because before the way I grew up, if I screwed up, people walked away from me. You know, I had, you know, mothers and fathers that I had that walked away from me because I didn't behave or something. And they just left me uh, or I got moved to another group home or I got kicked out. So I never had that stability of someone saying, hey. I'll love you no matter what. I mean, if you screw up, I still love you, but I want you to know what you did wrong and admit you did it wrong and move on. And that's to me kind of what Christianity is, is about accepting the things you've done wrong, hurting other people. Maybe they've hurt you, but you need to be able to forgive in order to allow them to be able to be forgiven. So for me, it was more about that responsibility, about knowing, hey, I can fall down. I can mess up doesn't mean I'm not a Christian. It just means I need to get back up, get back into the direction I have to go and ask for forgiveness and move forward and be a good role model. So it wasn't like it was a big change thing that happens. It was more of like learning the same way I would in life. You were recently down in Columbia too. You did some stem cell therapy down there. How are you feeling? How was that trip? Dude, I would recommend that to anybody. I know Brian Cage is down there doing it right now as we okay. speak. I know uh, Hall did it. Um, not sure if Nash did or not, but Ryan, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the big, 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 big show or whatever it is. Oh yeah. Uh, sure. But a lot of guys have gone down and and uh, and I done the stem cells and th that's the reason why I did it was because some of the stuff I got fed back from Matt Hughes and some of the things I heard that um, Chuck Liddell had done it was a lot of positive feedback and I said you know what I'm gonna do this because it, here in the states they're just too regulated like you don't get the the amount of stem cells you need for it to be effective gotcha. and so I went ahead and, and did it I heard I did my research making sure it wasn't abortions or anything like that it was it was from umbilicals that were donated from live babies. So I went down, I did it, and it was amazing. Even the second day, it's supposed to take at least three months for you to get the full effect. But in three days, I actually felt the irritation in my back, my lower back, my middle of my back. It was gone, but they actually said before, they go, when you make sure you realize the places that are aching, that are irritated, because after you get done with the procedure, your shoulders and your knees and your wrists are all going to be sore. And you're not going to realize that that irritation that you constantly feel is gone because where we injected those stem cells, you're sore. So right. you're more worried about the soreness rather than the infectedness that they've already done. And I remember when they said that, I literally, the second day, I remember my lower back and the middle of my back. I had, it's always been tight when I got up. And it took me a minute to get like warmed up yeah, it was yeah. gone i didn't have that wow. and so imagine six months from now or three months from now what i'll have so it's it is amazing and i say man if you could do that man it's like it's it's literally like being reborn that's awesome that's awesome and i want to do some fun questions with you uh you had an interview with ed mylett who's a guy that i love to listen to his shows interviewed with him i think about a year ago or so now but how was that experience what was, was he a pretty cool guy yeah when we first started talking uh, people were like wow this could be a great interview but i was like you know I, I, I didn't know right i was like oh, okay you know but as soon as we started up the interview and he started talking about some stuff that he was doing what he went through and what i went through and it was just like like we were a brother from another mother right it just seemed wow. to really go together and we had a great interview i thought the the stuff that we were able to talk about the amount of people that we were able to reach and help them through their issues so it was really a great time and really appreciated that time with him very cool and do you have a favorite band that you listen to or a favorite type of music that you listen to i listen to all kinds man country christian creek got a lot of good christian music now uh, but i listen cool. to country i listen to the uh oldies the rock you know so I listen to all of it if it's good music. Uh, this one might be a given, but uh, how does the world's most dangerous man eat your steak? Come on, man. Bloody. Eat him rare. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, last question for you. Who motivates and inspires you? Oh, I would say my Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, no question. He's the, you know, that's what's really got me to where I'm at today. 
Um, I can't look to any human being because we're all flawed. Yeah. So that's really my biggest. I look, read the Bible. And I look to see the things that he went through and some of the things that he dealt with. You know, we try to emulate that. We can't, but we try. So yeah, I would say Jesus Christ for sure. I'm not trying to get all religious or anything, but that's really what I rely on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I also, Ken, wanted to give you an opportunity to just give a shout out to anybody that's on your team, coaches, sponsors, anybody like that. Make sure they got a shout out on the video there for you. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we talk about our team. I know Des Woodward is my business partner, you know, done yeah. a tremendous job at this point. I know uh, Jen Wink, who used to work with the USC as the PR, and she's, she's with us. And she's done a great job. Todd Middendorf is our VP of operations. Um, he ran his own organization for 17 plus years. Lots of experience. Wow. Great person. Good person to work with. We got um, uh, Richard Goodman, who was really responsible for the card. Uh, totally uh, done a, a heck of a job on this card. And him himself has, has ran some organizations that have been in the top 10 uh, companies in the United States that have been successful. So he's he's another talented guy that we got on our team. And, I could, the list could go on, man. We've got sure. a lot of supporting cast that are great people. Um, I, I don't want to miss on talking about um, our direct TV, our yeah. Dish Network, all our major cable companies. If you want to watch it, you can't go there live. If you want to like watch it on your phone or stream it, you go to Fight TV. It's digital. Uh, you're gonna get hooked up on that. And um, so yeah, so we're like I said, we're not a fly by night company. We're here to stay. We want to take bare knuckle and we want to bring it into the light. We want to put it up there in a respectable column where it belongs in that combat sport arena. Absolutely. Valor Bare Knuckle, September 21st, Four Bears Casino, North Dakota. You can watch it all online, Direct TV. Fight TV, everything just you just listed. It's going to be awesome. Ken, thank you so much for your time, man. It's an honor to speak to you. I appreciate it. Thank you, and I look forward to September 21st at Four Bears Casino. When you go watch this fight, you'll see it in a different way, and then when you're done seeing this, you'll know why Valor BK is the best bare knuckle. Hey, guys, thank you so much for hanging around. Really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more videos from Top Ready MMA and the Bearded Biz Show, please click the playlist and also hit subscribe to our channel, become part of the Top Rated May and Bearded Biz community. We would really appreciate your support. Also, please leave a comment below. I will read and respond to all of them. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day.